Welcome to worship at Londonderry United Methodist. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are rejoicing today as we worship together and we study the scriptures about rest, about the ability to grow in God's grace and peace. And we hope that this service would bring you the inspiration to make time to get more rest, that you may grow closer to God. Let us join together in our mission statement. Loving God, loving people, making a difference. Let us worship together now.
us join together in our opening prayer and would you please join me let us pray holy god of mystery and miracles reveal your presence to us as we gather in worship send your holy spirit to descend upon us as angels once descended to jacob raise our thoughts that we may reflect on your promises and trust with hope in the promises yet to come in your holy name we pray amen Our first scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 19a. Hear these words. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and camped for the night since the sun had set. He took one of the stones there, set it under his head, and lay down to sleep, and he dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground, and it reached all the way to the sky, Angels of God were going up and coming down on it. Then God was right before him, saying, I am God, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. I'm giving the ground on which you are sleeping to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. They'll stretch from west to east and from north to south. All the families of the earth will bless themselves and you and your descendants. Yes, I'll stay with you. I'll protect you wherever you go, and I'll bring you back to this very ground. I'll stick with you until I've done everything I've promised to you. Jacob woke up, woke up from his sleep. He said, God is in this place, truly, and I didn't even know it. He was terrified. He whispered in awe. Incredible, wonderful, holy, this is God's house. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob was up. First thing in the morning, he took the stone he had used for his pillow and stood it up as a memorial pillar and poured oil over it. 
he christened the place Bethel, God's house. The name of the town had been Luz until then. And this is our first reading from Genesis chapter 28. Our next reading is from the psalmist, Psalm 139, verses 1 to 12 and 23 to 24. God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back, I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there, then up and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful, I can't take it all in. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you'd find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. Then I said to myself, ah, oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. It's a fact. Darkness isn't dark to you, night and day, darkness and night, they're all the same to you. Investigate my life, O oh God, find out everything about me, cross-examine and test me, get a clear picture of what I'm about, see for yourself whether I've done anything wrong, then guide me on the road to eternal life. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is time for our young at heart to come forward for a message. Come on up. I am using my pretend binoculars today to see you. Can you put your pretend binoculars on? Hey, I love looking at binoculars through them. I love looking at birds. I love trying to see what the squirrels are doing in the trees. Have you ever looked through binoculars? Oh. I see a police officer going by the church. Binoculars can help us see a lot. Jacob, Jacob saw God, but he didn't use binoculars to see God. He saw God in a dream when he was sleeping at night in his mind. He was just sleeping, minding his own business, getting his rest, his renewal, restoring his body from a, a long day, and God came to him in a dream. God has a lot of ways of entering our lives. And today's scripture just tells us that dreams are one way that God enters in. God can come to us in a dream and give us hope. God might help us recognize that we're having a struggle in life and we need to ask somebody for help. There's so much that dreams can tell us. In Jacob's dream, he was seeing a ladder and, and the angels were coming and going up and down the ladder from heaven to earth. And in his dream, that is a reminder that God wants connection from the heaven to the earth with we who are human. God wants us to be connected. So that was Jacob's dream. And my hope today is that no matter what you're dreaming, no matter what you're looking at through binoculars, that you would be searching for God and the attempt to understand how God is coming into your life. What good news is God bringing you? And if you're having a struggle and you have a bad dream, that might be an indication God is suggesting to you, ask mom and dad or a parent or a foster parent for help. Ask for help. That's the best way that, 
that we can get what we need and God helps us in all sorts of ways to reach out. I hope today and in these summer weeks when you're resting that you'll take some time to use binoculars, peer out at the world, and see what God has created in the universe. God loves you, and so do I. Thanks for being here. Let us join together now in asking God to bless the offerings of our lives. And this week, let us remember to make an offering of our bodies resting as a way that we might be more prepared to offer ourselves to God. Let us pray. God of ancient times and future hope, we offer these gifts to bless your world with hope. Please bless these gifts that they may be a blessing to others and bless us with rest, patience, and faith that we may bring hope to a hurting world. Amen. Thank you for who you are and what you offer to God's world and God's neighborhood.
together for a pastoral prayer in the Lord's Prayer, would you please join me? And let us begin in a moment of silence that we may offer before God our most intimate prayer, celebrations, and concerns. Let us pray. Thank you, O oh God, for hearing our hearts and our voices and for being responsive to each of us. We pray this day for any and all among us who are hospitalized, fighting illness, those who are in rehabilitation, those seeking and finding sobriety. Thank you, God, for being present to them and to us. Today we ask, O oh God, that you would hear our prayers of thanksgiving for all those who have sowed the good seed in life, for those who sow the seeds of practical help, for those who do not know where the next meal is coming from, for those who give seed loans to those who are starting off in business and money, to people whom banks won't even talk to, we give thanks for those who sow seeds of hope for parents trying to balance the challenges of home life, work, social lives, and activities for children. And we give thanks for those who sow seeds of peace for people confronting each other in local government and national leaders in conflict. God, we ask that all of those in our legislative government would find a way to make for peace. We support all those who sow the good seed. God, we await the harvest. And we give thanks this day, O oh God, for those who work and sow seeds among the troubled. We give thanks for social workers who bring understanding to those going through the storms of life child care workers who bring relief to parents and calm, very disturbed children. We give thanks for sensitive family doctors who give confidence to troubled patients, for ministers and counselors and funeral directors who bring peace and a new reality to those who are mourning. We support all who sow the good seed, God, and we await the harvest. And we give thanks, O oh God, within the church where good seed is being sown. We give thanks for clergy and lay leaders who preach and teach and offer pastoral care to the downhearted. We give thanks to those who encourage and challenge the children and youth to serve others and have confidence in their own abilities. We give thanks for those who advocate for the powerless. Who, and we give thanks, oh God, for those who call to us to look beyond our local faith community to the needs of those in distant and developing countries. And we wait, oh, uh, we wait with joy, oh God, for the harvest. We ask, oh God, that you would inspire and challenge us today. Help us to sow seed among our family members with a listening ear, with our friends to build them up, our social groups who look to us for support. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless all of our sowing of seeds. We ask this in Christ's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today we are reflecting on the scripture from Jacob and his dream, thinking about the angels ascending and descending. And uh, we want to be able to understand this scripture in such a way that we too experience God's presence, God's blessing in our lives. And maybe God is speaking to us through a dream. So let's take a closer look at this scripture. And remember, Jacob wasn't wearing a Fitbit. So we're not downloading any information about his body and what was going on physically, but we know in his heart and mind, he was very connected to God. In the story, Jacob uses horrific means to get a birthright and a blessing from his father. And we have to wonder together, why would God have such a character in the Bible highlighted and who did God exclude by choosing Jacob? And if God includes Jacob in the story and others are excluded, why? What is the meaning that God intends here? After all, the means of Jacob receiving the birthright and the blessing lacks integrity in every way. Jacob lacked integrity. He was very deceptive. He lacked every basic human decency in order to get that blessing and that birthright. So what is going on here? When I did a little research, I went to the scholar Terence uh, Friedheim. He says this, it would appear as if deception and desire may now play positive roles. Why? How does this come to be? What is it that God wants us to hear? Terence Friedheim also goes on about this scripture. He says, how God chooses to work in and through what human beings make available is important. This reveals a deep divine vulnerability for it links God with people whose reputations are not stellar and opens God's ways in the world to sharp criticism. God's choices are not always well received. God the creator works among people with blessings that take various forms, the most basic of which is life itself and often apart from contact with the community of faith. So in the end, hearing these words from a scholar, maybe the story of Jacob is highlighted to remind us of how we as a people of God can receive God's divine blessing, even though we have been indecent in our lives, no matter what deceptive practices we may have participated in, no matter what form of sin we have committed by intention or unintentionally and in inadvertently. Today, the scriptures are here to remind us in these slower summer days to consolidate the memory of Jacob's dream and our own experience of who God is and God's presence and grace into our lives. We are reminded to make time to be still, to rest, to renew, and especially to dream. When we do, we'll make ourselves available to God, closer to God, and to be able to become a blessing to others. Now, we know diet and exercise are very important to the life of one's body and one's restoring oneself. Experts tell us that five daily doses of fruits and vegetables, some say seven, along with 30 minutes of moderate exercise are essential to personal fitness but so is sleep. Miss a good night's sleep and we'll run the risk of gaining weight, becoming depressed, increasing our chances of heart disease and stroke. One journalist, Maddie Stone said, we need sleep in order not to feel like garbage the next day. Very technical language. Sometimes the healthiest activity as people of God is no activity. Just Stop working, rest, go to bed. 
Recently, a whole industry has gathered around sleep. There are over 10,000 different apps for sleep and uh, you can get any of them. They're very popular uh, on your smartphone or on another device. You can find them by going to Good Housekeeping and looking at their top list. You could go to the American Psychological Association, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Everybody is viewing and scoring which apps are the best. Skimp on your sleep and you are sure to feel like garbage the next day. That's what we know. But worse, you will miss out on some great dream time and the potential to meet God in those dreams. Now, Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac and Rebekah. He was living a very stressful life. He needed sleep. In particular, he was locked in a bitter sibling rivalry with his twin brother, Esau. First, Jacob tricked his father into giving him the blessing destined for his brother Esau. And then when Esau made plans to murder his sneaky brother, Jacob fled toward the city of Haran to escape Esau's fury. If anyone deserved a sleepless night, it was certainly Jacob. But the book of Genesis tells us that Jacob came to a certain place on his journey toward Haran and stayed there for the night. In verse 11, it says, because the sun had set, Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and laid down there. His heart rate, his blood pressure probably increased. His arm and leg muscles became temporarily paralyzed. His brain activity became similar to wakefulness and he began to dream. Now, remember, he wasn't wearing a Fitbit, so nobody's tracking his sleep, but even without that, History records that there was sleep tracking in the course of a dream. According to Genesis, Jacob dreamed that there was a ladder set up on earth. Some translations of the Bible call it a stairway or a ramp. In any event, it reached up to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending. Is this a weird dream? No. Now, for the people of faith, angels are ascending and descending all the times in our lives. Jacob's dream carried an important message. The brain was working hard all day long, and it was working hard in sleep. The Lord stood beside Jacob in his dream, and the Lord said to him, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. God promised that Jacob's offspring would be numerous, spreading to the four corners of the earth, and that all the families of the earth would be a blessing in Jacob and in his offspring. And then God concludes with these words, Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. When we track Jacob's sleep, we move closer to God and make important discoveries about the nature of who God is. And, God, and Jacob's dream reveals to us that God wants a relationship with us. The ladder between heaven and earth is a clear sign to us that God is not content to rule the universe from some high heavenly height, but wants to be connected to us. This desire for a relationship was first seen in Adam and Eve when they heard the sound of God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, that which we hear in Genesis 3, 8. The longing for a close connection was most definitely and clearly heard when the word of God became flesh and lived among us in Jesus Christ, as John chapter 1 verse 14 says. Jacob's dream reveals that God wants to be with us, not distant from us. 
God enters into the very center of human life in all of its complexities and difficulties, right into our human heart and mind. God also comes to us in grace, not in judgment. If anyone deserved to be judged for his sins, it was Jacob. He took advantage of Esau when the older brother was weak with hunger, offering him bread and lentil stew in exchange for the birthright. Then Jacob disguised himself as Esau in order to receive his father's blessing. And yet when the Lord appeared to Jacob, God offered him gracious gifts of land and numerous offspring. Jacob's dream shows that God gives us what we need, not what we deserve. The Lord is gracious and merciful, says the psalmist in, one, in Psalm 145 slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God promises to be with us always, wherever we go, and to remain faithful to us. The name Emmanuel means God is with us, and it was first spoken by the prophet Isaiah in chapter 7 and later attached to Jesus Christ in Matthew. God never leaves us, never abandons us, but stays close beside us through all our pains and struggles and failures. And although we sometimes fall away from God, God never leaves us. God says to Jacob, I will never leave you until I have done what I have promised. Jacob's dream assures us that God is also by our side, perfectly faithful to us. Jacob invites us to respond to his dream by seeing and accepting that God is, in fact, with us. We don't need binoculars to know that God is with us. Genesis tells us that when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Rest will help us to wake up to the ways in which God is has been with us and we failed to notice. Jacob discovered in his dream that God was far closer than he ever imagined and the place of his sleeping was the house of God, the gate of heaven. Jacob called the place Bethel, which means house of God. And today you and I have to remember that the house of God is wherever we lay our head. The story makes clear that the life of faith is not all about frenetic, frantic energy and activity. Jacob realized that the Lord was with him when he was sleeping, not when he was working. He discovered the house of God and the gate of heaven when he was sitting still, not running around. We too can move closer to God by caring for our bodies, taking time to rest, getting enough sleep, we discover that the Lord is near when we stop our relentless activity and allow ourselves to rest and dream. This summer is a great time to track our sleep and strengthen our relationship with God. Along with Jacob, we can discover the truth about Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am be still and know, be still, be. God wants a relationship with each of us. God offers us grace, not judgment. God promises to be with each of us always and to be faithful to us. These are the truths of Jacob's dream and they will be true for you and for me if we take our time to be still and know that God is with us. So as we slow down and accept this truth, let us sink in far enough into the pillow that we'll be able to get a good night's rest. Remember that part of the value of deep sleep is that it allows for memory consolidation and stabilization. It's important for the quality of our lives. In these slower summer days, consolidate the memory of Jacob's dream and your own experience of God's presence and God's grace. 
stabilize these beliefs so they will remain real and strong as you face the challenges of the days ahead. Take time to be still, to rest, to dream. When you do, you'll make yourself available to God and move closer to God, and you'll find yourself in Bethel, the house of God. So may it be. Amen. Having been renewed by this worship service, let us go now into the grace, the peace, the rest of God our Savior. May patience pave our path, may hope comfort our world, may rest restore us to joy, and may love guide our lives. Amen.